People in state parks are really excited about the resurgence of black bear in Missouri. Uh, I am too. Uh, it is a sign that we're recovering uh, our environment and our ecosystems to, to the point that they can support a large animal like a bear. That means we're doing something right. I am extremely excited to have bears in Missouri, and yes, I've had a long fascination with, with bears. I have never seen one in the wild. I would love to see one in the wild. To have this kind of a species back, I think is a wonderful indicator that the health of our natural landscapes is improving, that they're, they're an icon. Uh, you see bears on our state seal. Bears were an incredibly important part of the state's history with the settlers and early hunting practices. I, I think it's very exciting that we have this, this animal moving back into our state, and especially into our state parks. Missouri is experiencing an exciting natural event. Black bears are on the increase, especially in the southern Ozark Forest, thought to be extirpated from the state since the early 1900s. The return of the black bear is mostly due to the restocking of bears in Arkansas in the 1960s. There is evidence, though, that residual pockets of the original Missouri bears may have survived, hidden deep in the hills and hollows of the Ozarks. For Bill Bryan, director of Missouri State Parks, the bear's return is right in line with the park system's mission. Our mission is threefold. It's, it's our job uh, to protect special places, to educate people about those places, uh, and to provide for outdoor recreation so that people can have fun when they visit our parks and historic sites. And part of the fun is knowing that a great animal like a bear is out there, that we have wild places where bear can thrive and make a resurgence that we're seeing here in the Ozarks and in Missouri right now. We're not gonna see them out there the same frequency that we see deer in our parks. Uh, in fact, it would be very rare to see a bear. The, the number is estimated to be about 300 black bear in Missouri at this time. That population is expected to grow, uh, but it's going to take some time. Uh, the, this, there is not a, a reason to be alarmed by this. In fact, there's reason to be overjoyed by it. We're doing something right because the bear are coming back. Missouri has long been home to black bears. The state's forest habitat was prime real estate for black bears prior to European settlement. When the first explorers arrived, black bears were abundant throughout the area. The forest provides large quantities of nuts, berries, and insects for the bears to eat. And more importantly, trees and dense undergrowth provided bear cubs safe places to hide. As European settlement increased, deforestation and overhunting rapidly reduced Missouri's bear population. Bear became the second most commonly killed game animal after deer. One of those bear hunters was Daniel Boone's son, Nathan Boone. Uh, market hunting pushes against a lot of natural populations. You know, the beaver were the first to really start fading out, but the bear were not far behind them. And really, by the time Nathan moved down here to southwest Missouri in the 1830s, uh, the bear population would have been very, very thin. Dakota Russell is an interpreter at the Nathan Boone Homestead State Historic Site in southwestern Missouri. His interest in Nathan Boone's life has led to an intersection with the fate of Missouri's bears. Bears, of course, were plentiful in Missouri, like a lot of the other wildlife, um, you know, at the time of the first white settlement, when the first European settlers started coming in. When, say, Nathan Boone enters the scene as a market hunter in the early 1800s, while he's going after beaver, which are the biggest part of the fur trade, you know, you have got these secondary animals that they're collecting too, and bears are definitely one of those. The uh, fat was the most important thing off the bear. Its primary use was in tanning hides to keep the hides soft, uh, but it was also used as a cooking oil. It was used as a light source. They would use it in oil lamps because it's relatively smoke-free. And they would also use it as an all-around waterproofer and lubricant for whatever you need. A lot of the times they would uh, eat bear out in the field uh, because bear was very prized as a meat during the 19th century. Um, in fact, Lewis and Clark, when they're coming through Missouri, talk about, uh, you know, hunting bears and eating bears. And it's one of their favorite meats and the same for Nathan and Daniel Boone. 
Nathan lived long enough that he was able to, in the 1840s, see these animals that they thought would be here forever and were so plentiful and abundant when they first arrived. He was able to see them starting to thin out, you know. I think that uh, even those early hunters, like Nathan Boone, if you uh, told them today that bears were coming back to Missouri, that would be very exciting for them as well, and they would, they would like seeing that. The state of Missouri has always had a special relationship with bears, or at least images of bears. In 1822, a man named Robert William Wells designed a seal for the new state of Missouri. On it, he depicted three bears, which he described as the white or grizzly bears of Missouri. Though grizzly bears were never native to the state, Wells chose them for their courage and hardihood which he said reflected qualities inherent in all Missourians. Whatever the species, the bear symbolism is everywhere in the state capitol. With over 300 state seals in the capitol building, each depicting three bears, not to mention the newel posts, the drinking fountains, and other random bear imagery, it is safe to say that no state embraces bears more than Missouri. With these iconic reflections glittering through state government, perhaps it is fitting that real bears, hair, muscle, and bone, are now returning to their home range in Missouri. Missourians have not lived with a large predator for over a century. Misconceptions concerning their diet and life cycle are sure to exist. Kendra Swee, a naturalist with Missouri State Parks, has some insights into the inner lives of bears, and the results may surprise you. The black bear's picnic basket is filled with a variety of food items. Most of these, though, are not what we would think. They are not animals, large or small, for the most part. They are mostly going to be plants and insects. The plants along the trail here in the spring are prime food for the bear. But as they harden and toughen, they're going to move more to berries that are ripening and insects. And one of the best places for them to find insects is in rotten logs like this one. And one of their favorite things to eat are these little larvae, the pupa, high in protein and a good food source for the black bear. Another great food source for the bear are these tent caterpillar nests. Inside this webbing, there's probably a couple hundred of the tent caterpillars, and a black bear could come along and have this eaten in just a few seconds. Um, they actually will eat 25,000 of these caterpillars a day when they can find them. So throughout the summer, they will feast on berries and insects as fall sets in and the acorn and other nut um, crops ripen. They move into um, primarily eating those as a food source, especially the acorns. The acorns are their favorite. They will put on a pound and a half of weight um, each day just off of the acorn crop. Um, so they will actually go from losing two-thirds of their body weight um, in March to being up to 300 pounds for a female and 600 pounds for a male by November when they head back into hibernation. Winter is the quiet time for Missouri bears as they tuck into caves or shallow dens for what has been termed a light hibernation. Though their body temperature is lowered, they maintain a normal brain temperature, allowing them to wake more rapidly. Bears are the only animals that give birth to their young while hibernating. They have two to three cubs every other year. The cubs are tiny, eight ounces at birth, but will put on five to 10 pounds before they leave the den. This family unit of mother and cubs will stay together for an entire year. Before breeding starts in May of the following year, the mother will chase off the yearling cubs. It's these juvenile males wandering to establish a territory of their own that often get into trouble, interacting with people, raiding trash cans for food. Bears really don't like people very much unless we have food for them. While the staff at Missouri State Parks is excited about the bears' return to the state, they are aware of the potential for conflict between humans and these dispersing males. John Cunning, 
Program Director for Resource Management and Interpretation, is part of a team working to help park guests become more bear aware. Probably the most important thing to do is to not provide a food source for the bears. Uh, keep a clean camp, throw your garbage in, in the proper receptacles, uh, you know, don't leave garbage on the ground or in the campfire ring because bears have an incredible sense of smell and that's going to bring them in. And once the bears associate humans with a source of food, they lose their fear of humans. And that's when we have problem encounters because bears will become, they can become aggressive, uh, they become panhandlers, and that's when you have those negative interactions between visitors and bears. We've got a couple handouts here we'll all give you guys. One of them is hiking in bear country, and the other one is on the bear aware in Missouri State Parks. Measures are being taken to keep Missouri State Parks safe for people and for bears. New locking dumpsters, evening trash pickups, and redesigned fish cleaning stations are being implemented in some parks. Campers and guests can do their part as well. Never keep food in a tent. The trunk of a car is the preferred option if bear-proof storage is not available. Keep in mind, that anything that smells like food is food to a bear. Flavored toothpaste, wintergreen tobacco products, even scented candles can trigger that food response in bears and should be treated appropriately. If you're hiking in the back country, hard plastic bear canisters work well. Hanging food high in a tree is another possibility. General camp cleanliness and attention to scent control should prevent any problems before they arise. And what should you do in the unlikely event that you encounter a bear? Bear population right now is relatively small, uh, but it is growing. And what we would like to do is get our visitors accustomed to the idea when the bear population is small, get them accustomed to the idea that they might see a bear and how should they react. And if you're in a trail situation and you see a bear, um, stand up really straight. Get your arms out. Make yourself look big and then back away slowly. Chances are the bear's going to back away from you. They really don't like people. And as long as they're not surprised and don't feel threatened, they'll try to avoid the encounter with you. While bear sightings are rare, they are possible. Missouri State Park staff should be notified of any sightings at their facilities. This will help them to better assess bear populations and monitor potential problems. Nuisance bears encountered outside state park property should be reported to local Missouri Department of Conservation officials. Some conflicts are inevitable, but a better educated public will ensure that black bears and humans can both enjoy our beautiful state parks. It's very exciting to have the opportunity at the front end of this resurgence to educate people and share the information that we all need so that we can all coexist with bear in our state parks and in the wild for years to come. Every Missourian should feel a swell of pride at the resurgence of bears into the state. This icon of wildness has come home. Home to a state that places special value on the quality of our natural resources. By following a few simple bear aware tips, you will be ensuring that bears and people will coexist, not only in our state parks and historic sites, but throughout the state of Missouri.